So I'm from like smack dab in the middle of the United States. Um, not a lot of people know we're there, but Kansas City is fantastic. If you're ever in the mood to visit, I would highly recommend. We've got a fantastic food and dining scene. Um, but let's get started. Who's excited to talk about Jewelbots? Does anybody? Yeah, yeah, all right, let's get pumped. Um, is everybody familiar with Jewelbots? Oh, okay, that's so exciting. So you guys will get to learn all about it for the first time. Um, so before we get started, I do want to say thank you to all the fantastic sponsors. Um, hopefully you crept the food booths yesterday. They had a, a fun assortment. Um, and I don't know if you have any idea what goes into putting on a conference, but it's a lot of work and a lot of money. Um, so be sure to show some love to all the sponsors here today. They're what are providing such great content for you guys, making sure ticket prices stay reasonable. Um, so definitely show them some love. <clears throat> Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Jennifer Wadella. You can follow me on Twitter at likeomgitsvedi. I do like to warn people um, that I live tweet The Bachelor on Monday night. So you've, you've been warned if you're going to follow me, just like, yeah, mute me on, on Monday nights because that's just my happy place. Um, I'm a big advocate of what I call work-life volunteer balance. Um, so I, I love programming, I love writing code, but I also love having other hobbies and other things in my life, um, like watching trashy reality television. So. <clears throat> Um, I am a JavaScript developer, uh, that's my happy place. I work at a really teeny tiny, like I'm engineer number three, uh, tech startup in the United States. Um, Angular, it's cool, I get to write JavaScript, I'm low maintenance, I'm happy. <clears throat> um, I'm a community organizer and so I'll talk a little bit about that work in a minute and kind of how that plays into Jewelbox, why, um, why I discovered this product, why I find it so amazing. Um, and I'm a big diversity advocate. Um, spoiler alert, I'm a woman. Uh, and when you look around the room or around the conference, uh, we tend to be small in numbers, and I think that should change. So a lot of the work that I do revolves around um, trying to get more women into technology careers and um, creating a more diverse pool of software engineers. <clears throat> and I am self-taught, um, so I kind of like to talk about uh, the different pathways of education that uh, people have gotten into software engineering. Uh, we're moving away from that period of time where you're expected to have a four-year computer science degree to be successful. Um, so yeah, that's me. Uh, was anybody like coding in the MySpace or Zenga days? Anybody, was that a thing? Okay, like your angsty blog that you had online when you're like, this guy I really like doesn't even know I exist. And, and I'm changing the background to like do my mood and do the JavaScript falling stars that were super classy mid 90s. Anyway. <clears throat> So I want to take a minute to kind of talk about the work that I do back in the United States. So five years ago, I founded an organization called Kansas City Women in Technology. And the idea was I wanted to find more women like me, um, women who are excited about technology and software, and we could geek out over stuff together. Um, nothing against any of the guys I worked with. They were all fantastic. Um, but there was just something missing when I wasn't um, around people who were more like me. Um, so we had this big launch party, everybody was excited, we did all this marketing, and like 300 people showed up. Uh, and maybe like a, a couple, like a handful were female um, engineers or, or women in technology. And so it's like, okay, well who's everybody else? Uh, we had a ton of educators show up and they were like, well we want to help bring code to our program and you're, you're a technology organization, so this is a place, right? And uh, then we had a lot of women who were like, well, I'm not in a tech career, but it's really important. This is the future. Like, I want to get into a tech career. Um, and I like to share that story because it definitely wasn't what I anticipated or set out to do, uh, but it shaped the trajectory of the organization. Uh, so from there, we launched a chapter of Coder Dojo. Is anybody familiar with? Nope, nope, yep, okay, a couple of hands. I'm like, I'm, I'm reading the, do we need more coffee? Like, do we need to get it delivered in? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so for those who don't know, um, Coder Dojo is a global nonprofit actually founded in Ireland uh, with this idea of being an after school uh, club for kids to learn how to code. Uh, so they made like this kind of really cool model where you can implement it however um, works for you in your community as long as it's free and with the idea of teaching kids, kids how to code. Um, so our Kansas City chapter has been running for four years now and the way we run that is we do it <clears throat> once a month in the morning. We do about three hour sessions. We found that's a really good time to get kiddos onboarded, to get them set up. Maybe if they have to uh, sign in, like sign up with an email address or that kind of thing. Um, and then we provide them with a kind of project prompt. It, because if you take a kid and you're just like create, they'll kind of look at you and be like, but I could create everything. And so we found it helps if you kind of give them boundaries to frame their ideas and then push against those boundaries. 
Um, so we give them a project prompt, we give them kind of an idea, like we might um, decide that, well, we want you to use variables in your project, that's, that's your little check mark, or um, maybe we want you to be choosing a random value from a list, some sort of very small, tangible programming concept. Um, and that kind of keeps them on track, and then they can do this in Scratch, they can do it in HTML and CSS, they can do it in JavaScript, and then if their project um, is on theme, so with the presentation, um, if they have completed like the checklist for whatever, they get to go up and get their presentation checked, make sure there are no bad words, no obscure references, because sometimes kids will do something and you're like, I really don't think that's a good idea for the five-year-olds in the room to see, um, especially the boys that are really obsessed with doing games of like aliens shooting each other and blood splattering everywhere. We're like, let's, let's tone that content down a little bit. Um, they get to come up on stage and present. Because uh, a lot of what we're trying to do is not only teach kids how to teach themselves to code, but build a lot of those skills that um, we don't always see uh, being prioritized as software engineers. So getting up on stage, being comfortable presenting your code, explaining your thought process, and one of the things we do is we always ask the kids, um, <clears throat> what was the hardest thing you had to figure out? Because we want them to reflect on their challenges and reflect on their struggles and realize that if they persevere, they can figure it out. So a lot of what we do is very much um, trying to shape their mentality uh, to, to be what we think is important for the future of engineers, engineers who are gonna push boundaries and make things happen and not expect everything to be handed to them in a textbook. <clears throat> Okay, so that's the way we run our Coder Dojo. That being said, you can make it fit for whatever model your city is. So if you're interested in doing any of this kind of work and would like a really great way to like bootstrap and get started, highly recommend checking out Coder Dojo resources and bringing it to your community. I like to say it's like reliving your hello world moment over and over again each time the kiddos get excited. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, from there, we got a, a lot of interest in, in selling out and we would get asked to come to schools and talk about it. And so I noticed this really interesting thing that started to happen because we're like, oh yeah, like, come check out this coding club. And the programmer dads will like rush up to our table, right? And they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. How can I sign my daughter up? And we're like, yeah, come join us, have a great time. And then off, more often than not, it's the moms that would come by our table and, and kind of look and, and check it out. And we'd explain what we're about and what we're doing, and they'll be like, hmm, I don't, I don't think my daughter would like that. Maybe I'll bring my son. <sighs> so it's not the kiddos we're having a problem with. It's this, these um, <clears throat> predispositions the parents have about programming, these misconceptions they have. So what do we do? We brand it, we make it pink, we make it girly, and all of a sudden it sells out all the time. Same content underneath. I've got eight-year-old girls pushing uh, to GitHub pages on the command line to display their cupcake website. So if it's pink, I don't really care because they're doing awesome stuff. The code underneath is the same. And all of a sudden, they have this idea that they deserve to be in the room. They deserve to be included. Um, <clears throat> so that's my little marketing gimmick. Um, I run a Slack channel for developers in the Midwest. Uh, and then from there, we launched Coding and Cocktails because we had a bunch of women who were like, well, I don't have a daughter, but can I sign up anyway? Uh, so we're like, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna create this, this program uh, that's gonna teach women how to code. Uh, of course, again, with the marketing, the branding, and the gimmicking, uh, Coding and Cocktails was born. Um, so this is uh, an 11-month program. I wouldn't call it like a, a structured, rigid curriculum. Um, <clears throat> we're teaching front-end development, we're teaching source control, we're teaching like intro to the command line because if you're reading these tutorials online and, and they're like LS and, and CD and you're like, oh my God, like am I gonna press a button and like alert a nuclear strike, you know? Eh, eh, anybody see, oh, okay, meh. Uh, <laughs> so um, kind of breaking down these things that aren't necessarily spelled out really well in online content, like anybody can go to Code Academy, right? and figure out semantics for HTML and CSS, but we try and um, bring together all those different pieces that you're not necessarily gonna um, be able to get very easily <clears throat> without resources. So we've got a presentation, we've got all female mentors, all female presenters um, who are there to help attendees, so we'll present and work through a curriculum. Um, and it's been a really great model for us, and we've had women who have started coming to our programs, decided, okay, you've, you've broken down these misconceptions I have, I wanna compu um, pursue computing now, and so they'll maybe sign up for a boot camp, and then eight months later, they've landed their first job in technology, have come back to us and started mentoring. Um, so it's really cool to see that full cycle of getting women at, at every age level into technology. Um, and then finally, we do a Django Girls session um, every year during the summer. Is anybody familiar with Django Girls? Yeah! 
Um, so again, uh, this is another bootstrap concept actually founded in Europe where um, they've created this workshop and this amazing uh, curriculum. Like it is so damn hard to write curriculum and they've written this amazing guidebook um, to how to launch your first blog in Django. They've got a mentor guide, so many amazing resources. So they're like, here, it's all pretty and packaged in a bow. Go teach women to code. Um, so if you're ever, again, interested in doing this kind of work, uh, definitely look into Django Girls. They've got everything bootstrapped and amazing. Uh, and yeah, those kind of efforts are fantastic. All right. <clears throat> so uh, what inspired this talk? Wait for laugh. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so representing women in technology in my community and at, at particular conferences, this is the question I get asked all the time. People will wander up to the booth. Well, coding is important. This is the career path of the future. It's the next blue collar job. How do I get my daughter um, engaged? And they're asking me because I do a lot of this. So uh, that's why <clears throat> I was so excited that Jewelbox came out. Um, <clears throat> So they were actually a Kickstarter um, founded, by, uh, the, founded by the founder of Girl Develop It, which is another um, program teaching women to code. And so this is her, her passion project. Um, so it was really cool to see something that was explicitly being marketed to girls saying, hey, this is a way to code, this is for you. Um, but, but why? Why do we need to have a particular product like this marketed to girls? <clears throat> so we need to talk about the idea of why girls aren't getting into coding to kind of break down those ideas and then understand why Jewelbots and concepts like it are so powerful um, <clears throat> in, in solving this problem of making technology a more inclusive place. So a bunch of different things that uh, are kind of preventing girls from getting in, because you hear that question all the time, why aren't more girls into code? Why aren't more women into code? So we're dealing with issues like psychological barriers, leading back to that story where the mom's like, mm, no, no, not for my daughter, maybe my son. Okay, so we're, we've got some issues going on there. Um, lack of encouragement and role models. Uh, you definitely think of uh, the stereotypical programmer in a certain way, and that's maybe not what a, a little girl wants to grow up and appear like. <clears throat> uh, Gender-based marketing and the idea that tech isn't made for girls. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, of course, societal pressures, which... It's not gonna change anytime soon, but we're gonna do the best we can to work with what we have. Um, <clears throat> so I always like to start off talking about this study, and this was a um, psychological study done on 10-year-old boys and girls, high IQs. Uh, and so this study basically took these kiddos, these very smart kiddos, and approached them with challenging curriculum and challenging material. And they found this really interesting thing that the harder the, um, the challenge was, the harder the curriculum was, uh, the more quickly the boys pursued it and challenged it and took to it versus the girls. The higher the girl's IQ, the more quickly she dropped the challenging material. So what's going on? Okay, we've got kids a, of, of equal intelligence. What do, what do we think? How do we normally describe girls when they're like first getting into school? Uh, or no, okay, how do we normally describe boys when they're like first getting into school like um, up to about 10 years old? Boisterous, good word, okay. Well, we'll just go from there where, you know, they might be a little more boisterous, a little more rambunctious, kind of all over the place, excited, passionate, full of life, and so they're told, hey, hey, focus. Hey, keep working on this. Hey, if you just pay attention, you can get this done. Whereas we have girls that at that age can sometimes mature a little faster, and so they're told, oh, good job. You did so well. You're so smart. You got this right away, you're so smart. So, so what message is that sending? We are, you know, we're not doing anything maliciously, but we are giving girls the idea that intelligence is innate. It is this one level, and you've only got this certain amount of intelligence, right? And <clears throat> you've never been encouraged to challenge or try harder, versus the boys are being told, hey, focus. Hey, if you pay attention, you can figure this out. And so boys are getting this idea that as long as they focus, as long as they work hard, they can, you know, figure out any challenge. And uh, when I read this article, it just blew my mind because I was that girl that I was always very smart. I breezed through school, things were not challenging, and then I got to college and I'm an econ and it's a stupid subject anyway, but um, I'm bawling on the phone every night to my mother about how I'm too dumb to be in college because I'm flunking econ and I don't understand and I was just wasting money and like I just needed to come home because I was too stupid. And I had never been 
presented with something before that challenged me. I had no idea how to tackle something that I didn't immediately understand. And that very much followed me into my programming career where if maybe I struggled a little bit with a concept, oh, well, I'm just not as smart as those other programmers. I just can't figure it out. And then I read this article and I was like, oh my God, if I just try a little bit harder, I can do this. Um, <clears throat> So I say this um, to kind of frame one of those psychological issues that's going on with girls that can um, lay into those challenges that we have getting in coding. Let's cycle back to that question that we asked the kiddos at Coder Dojo. What was the hardest thing you had to figure out? Because again, we want to reinforce that idea that they had a challenge and they were able to figure it out and make it work and then they can go on and take it on the even bigger challenge next. <clears throat> so. Uh, <clears throat> we talk about role models. Does anybody watch Silicon Valley in Europe? Okay, all right, yeah, this is Richard um, losing, his, losing his shit over tabs versus spaces. Um, but again, this is kind of what we see as a traditional programmer, and so if you've got a young woman who is looking for a role model and sees somebody like this, I mean, the show is spectacularly entertaining, but this maybe isn't the kind of thing she's gonna be drawn towards versus you see maybe like the, the sexy doctors on Grey's Anatomy, right? And ooh, that looks way more glamorous than, uh, than, than poor Richard. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, <sighs> it's interesting showing a screenshot from Reddit because we all know Reddit is a wonderful place and Reddit is a horrible place, much like the rest of the internet. Um, but when we do sometimes market products that heaven forbid, are pink and maybe meant to appeal to girls, we see backlash where people are upset about the idea that a technology company would have the audacity to make something pink because it might make it more inclusive. Um, so we're talking about some more subliminal stuff when we talk about the messages girls are getting, but here is pretty blatant, no, this is our space as you know, men, girls don't belong, get out, this is us. Um, so there are actual people, and that's a message that girls and women are hearing that they don't deserve to belong here, and that's a very loud message when it comes through and, and nasty comments like that. Um, girls are judged so harshly on their appearance. When you walked in this room and saw me on stage, what did you think about me? Okay, that's valid. Um, <laughs> but again, like I chose things for my appearance because I, as a woman, as an engineer, need to kind of prove that I deserve to be in the room. So of course, I'm wearing minified low dash on my leggings um, before anybody asks that question. Uh, the, the woman who created this, these are from a website called naughtygits.com. Um, so they've got a whole bunch of uh, great content, like they have an HTML tag that's uh, slash mansplaining. Um, <clears throat> they do have leggings for guys too, by the way, so if you too would like to model low dash leggings, but I had contacted the organizer to ask what the code was, and she was like, it was just the largest JavaScript file on my desktop at the time, and I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so, <laughs> Uh, we, we judge everyone, but women particularly um, are expected to fill a certain image um, <clears throat> because if I was on stage in maybe a really flouncy dress, it'd be, it'd be like, is she really an engineer? Like these kind of things are what we think about women. Um, I'm sure all the women in this room have had that experience of you walk into a user group and the whiplash from the neck says everybody turns around and they're like, oh, girl, woman, girl, 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 girl. And you kind of are like walking in the room and everybody's staring at you and you're like, I'm really uncomfortable with being judged right now. Um, but this is a fact of life. This is not gonna change anytime soon. Us as a society, you know, we'd love to be altruistic and work towards this, you know, ultimate goal of, of not judging, but that's not gonna happen today. Um, so I bring this up because it, it plays into the way we need to market to girls, knowing that they are gonna be judged on their appearance and helping them emulate the kind of appearance they want to project for fitting in society. Um, I was super into Star Wars, and well, I'm still into Star Wars, but um, in middle school, I had to go to the boys' section of the store to find a Star Wars t-shirt, because why would they make a Star Wars t-shirt for girls? So I had to, you know, wear the, wear the baggy thing, and, you know, so that kind of thing plays into the way I was judged in middle school and the kind of things I, I um, dealt with. Um, so all these things are coming together to why Jewelbots is amazing. So 
Um, what can we do better? How can we help this situation? Okay, so Jewelbot, step one, we want exposures to opportunities. So all those programs I talked about, those are the kind of social engagements and things where it's like, yay, coding is fun, uh, that girls are gonna feel comfortable and like they deserve to be that, in that environment. <clears throat> Positive reinforcement, we want to encourage hard work and perseverance. We want to be, you know, telling them, you can make any challenge happen. You, you can do anything. You want it, you can build it, you can create it. The sky is the limit. Um, female role models, kind of having some key people to um, point girls to or, or women to, um, to kind of show them what's not Richard angry tabs versus spaces. <clears throat> Um, and helping her wardrobe reflect her empowerment. Again, this is another thing that Jewelbots ticks off, but we'll go through some examples. Um, is anyone familiar with Simone Gertz? Or, uh, she calls herself the queen of shitty robots. Um, so uh, there's so many fantastic things about her, um, but obviously she's a woman in STEM building robots, but the fact that the robots are so terrible gives it such this endearing, intangible quality, right? Like, it's one thing to look at a woman working at NASA and she's like, working on a massive rocket and you're like, oh my God, I could never do this. But when you're looking at somebody building crappy robots, right, that's like really tangible, that's really obtainable. Um, so if, yeah, I always like to reference her and there is a more um, age appropriate queen of most wonderfully craptastic machines. So, you know, you can tone that down for, for the kiddos. Um, but so finding women like her uh, to kind of show girls the fun side of tech and the, uh, there's a way to um, just be fun. I don't know if you guys have seen her lipstick one where it's like all over her face. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, <clears throat> so always like to point her out. Um, so when I talked about having to shop in the boys section for, for Star Wars shirts, it's really amazing that we've gotten companies that have finally gotten their shit together and said, oh, we, we can empower girls instead of giving them t-shirts that say, I'm too pretty to do math, or my brother has to do my homework for me. True story, those were actual t-shirts from like five years ago. Um, so <clears throat> a couple of these, the um, squad goals one and the future coder, those are actually from a local company in Kansas City called Crossing Arrows where this mother, um, her daughter didn't feel like any of the clothing was representing who she identified as. And so this mom was like, okay, well I'm gonna launch this awesome uh, clothing line to give her empowerment, and some of these actually come in adult women's sizes too, which is kind of fun. Um, some of the other ones are from Old Navy, um, and I know it's kind of hard to see the links, but I'll, I'll give you guys a slide after this, and you can click through if you're interested in, in, in purchasing some empowerment gear. <clears throat> okay, so now, now what we're all ready and waiting for, right? Jewel bots. <clears throat> okay. So jewel bots are essentially programmable robotic bracelets. Um, <clears throat> they are Bluetooth enabled, so they can have a very social component that girls can use to code. Um, so they've got some default functionality, but they are a really great entry point into starting to write code and having a lot of fun. And because they do connect, um, <clears throat> doing that social component and sending super secret messages at school. As far as I know, they're not banned yet. I don't think the school systems have quite caught on to this like hot tech. So. <clears throat> Uh, so created by Sarah Chips, who um, uh, did Girl Develop It is what she's well known for, and so has spent a lot of time in the, in the women in tech space thinking about the idea of like, how do we get girls, how do we get women interested and engaged in this? <clears throat> okay, so uh, program via Arduino. Uh, has anybody done Arduino? Coding before? Okay, so fair bit of hands in the room. Um, so yeah, you can just use the basic IDE. Do you know they've launched a cloud version? Pretty cool, so you can, you can code and upload on the go. Um, we're still trying to figure out how to get ours to work with Chromebooks, but for now, anywhere you can download the IDE on, this is gonna work. Use a C++, um, <clears throat> it's open source, and one of the things that I like to call out is um, they do have a really great form, but they have their own documentation. And so kind of this recurring theme I've been talking about is teaching kids um, to be the kind of engineers we want. And so what's so crucial to being a programmer, being an engineer, is being able to take a new, new library or some sort of idea and then go and read the docs and figure out how to implement. And so it's really cool to have um, Jewelbots kind of getting girls in that mindset from the beginning. So instead of giving her the answers, you can say, hey, let's go, let's go look at the documentation and figure out how to do that point her to the docs and, and equip her with those tools to, to problem solve on her own. <clears throat> All right, so basic setup. Um, <clears throat> just needing your Jewelbot bracelet. You can see my lovely custom strap bracelets I've done. 
Um, <clears throat> they're programmed via micro USB. They, of course, give it to you in the package, but if you lose them, and does anybody else have like that big bin at their house just full of like, USB cords and like LAN cables and like old routers that you'll never use again, but for some reason you're like, but it's my router from the 90s. It's been with me for years. Um, so in case you lose them in there, uh, just micro USB, <clears throat> a computer, <laughs> Arduino IDE, um, and then you just have to do a little bit of setup, and this is kind of a thing you do once and then forget about it. Um, <clears throat> but we've got a couple boards that you need to go ahead and add and then restart your IDE um, <clears throat> to get those updated. So this is available to paste in from the slides, but it's also available in their documentation. So whatever floats your canoe. <clears throat> All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, kind of what the default functionality these offer, because um, they do have just some basic settings that you can kind of play with, and that really sets the stage for when girls want to go in and start customizing and writing their own code. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to make sure our firmware is updated, um, which you can do by just uploading a blank sketch, super simple, um, and I'll show that in a minute in the demo. Um, but that's kind of your starting point, get it updated, make sure it's up to speed in case it was sitting in the back of a box on a shipping truck for a long time. <clears throat> All right, so uh, Jewelbots work best with friends. I need two friends. <laughs> okay, so you guys, you guys are gonna come up and demo. So if you wanna put these on, yes. I did this demo last week, and, uh, and, and John came up to demo, and he's like trying to get in on his wrist, and I'm like, oh crap, I made this from a like, teeny tiny girl wrist. <laughs> um, but this works out. Okay, so I've got the instructions behind you, so this is gonna take a moment to fig figure out. Um, so in Jewelbots, we have a specific counting time, so when we have to count a number, we do one Mississippi, to Mississippi, and I don't know if that translates well just because it's a state in the United States and it takes a long time, so if you're playing hide and go seek, like to make sure people aren't like, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, I'm gonna come find you. You're like, one <laughs> Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, so when we talk about holding the magic button down for two seconds, we go one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, so the first thing you guys are gonna do is press the button once um, in the middle, just kind of press down and you'll feel it click. Oh yeah. Ooh, okay, so it's lighting up. Your jewel bot is now on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super exciting. All right, so th what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in pairing mode and you guys are gonna become friends with each other with your jewel bots. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna hold the magic button down for two seconds. One, One Mississippi, Mississippi, two, two Mississippi. Mississippi. All right, let go. And then, yep, you're gonna get the cerulean. Okay, you're blinking, you need to try it again. One so she's got some. Yeah, okay, so um, they've got these blinking cerulean lights, which means they are now in pairing mode, and so one of them should start cycling different colors, and so, <laughs> come on demo gods. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I always budget extra time for this, because you never know how temperamental they're gonna be. Uh, try clicking yours once. Is that gonna start it cycling? Uh, nope, okay, put yours back into pairing mode. Oh, there it goes. What we're waiting to happen is we'll start cycling colors, and so they're... Maybe we have both of our users with you. I don't know if I've had that issue before. Um, but these will start cycling the light colors and then they can choose their different friendship color. And so what happens is you compare the different jewel bots together so they could like choose the color red and they would be red friends. And then if we paired, we could be blue friends. Yeah, so try it again. Oh, oh, oh! oh. <laughs> Okay, so now her colors are cycling, so it's gonna go through cerulean, red, green, or blue, so you guys can choose your friendship color, so oh, cool. decide which one you want, and then when it's on that light color. Uh, do you want the cyan? Okay. Okay, <laughs> I like cyan. It okay. Makes me happy. Okay. There you go, all right, so she chose cyan, so give it a moment, and you guys should both start blinking cyan. Yep. Yep. Oh. You know what, blink red, I'm gonna get angry. Um, yeah, press the middle button, see if it'll. 
Um, okay, um, we're gonna turn it off and turn it back on. So to turn it off, um, you're gonna hold down for five Mississippis. Mm -hmm. Wait, well, is it? My did it? Oh, uh, that put it into pairing mode. So you Mississippi. Yep, off. Go. Okay. okay, now turn it back on. And what should happen is you should be paired and it should light up cerulean to let you know that your cerulean. Did you buzz? Nope. Oh, okay. That should let you know that your cerulean friend is nearby. Because you're lit up cerulean. All right, let me see. Let me see if we can be friends. Maybe you guys weren't meant to be we friends. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, shoot. I don't. This is uh, currently has one of my custom sketches uploaded onto it. So um, let me put it in friendship pairing mode real quick so we can actually be friends. Um, <clears throat> Do you want me to? <gasps> no, it's just. Oh, is that, that just pairing, pairing mode? mode? Right. Shall I, shall I try and pair again? Um, yeah, see what happens if yeah. yours goes into pairing mode. Because what it should happen is it should cycle colors um, that you don't have paired with yet. Okay, I think you turned it off. <laughs> okay, um, while they uh, play and figure out their jewel bots, um, and then once we get paired, we can send messages, which is super fun. Okay, um, <clears throat> I will show you guys what it is like to get these working. So um, <clears throat> here I've got my micro USB and you can see, I've got this backwards, okay. If I can figure out, okay, there we go. All right, so <clears throat> when I go ahead and plug this in, I need to set it into uploading mode. And so we're gonna, because I figure out my camera, I'm backwards. Okay, um, so to put into upload mode, you hold down two Mississippi, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and we're gonna get a magenta kind of flash, if you guys can see that color, it's not great. Um, <clears throat> and we are now in upload mode, so I am going to go into Arduino. So we uh, already downloaded those boards that we wanted, and so mine is currently in solo coding mode, um, but I wanna go ahead and reset it back to the factory state so I can pair and try and figure out um, our friendships. <clears throat> so I'm just going to upload a bank sketch. Um, can you guys see that okay? Where I'm in my factory firmware update mode. All right, I've got my blank sketch. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have my um, serial port selected uh, for my jewel bot. And then we'll go ahead and upload this blank sketch and that should put mine into friendship mode um, so I can try and pair with them. Uh, <clears throat> so you have to set the different modes on the jewel bot to to change between what's going on. All right, so did you guys get yours figured out? Are you green uh, friends now? I've tried again. No, no, I changed it to green, but it's still light. It's, nope. Hmm, I wonder if that's not charged enough from last night. All right, we'll give mine a minute to upload. Um, so if you've never used the Arduino before, this is kind of the basic setup um, where you're gonna write your code. Obviously, this is just a very blank sketch that we're using to reset the jewel bot, um, and you'll get some messaging down here. And there might be weird error messages that aren't really valid, but um, once it's uploaded, it will say specifically this, this has been uploaded. <clears throat> so we'll give that a minute. Uh, oh, wait, okay. All right, yep, we're sending. Uh, so once we do have all our jewel bots paired and we wanna to start to send messages, <clears throat> uh, to send messages, we're gonna click our button once to put it into messaging mode. Very much like the um, pairing mode, it'll start to circle. And so all your friends that are in, in Bluetooth range of the different colors, those colors will start to cycle. And so let's say you're like, oh, hi, my green friend is here. I wanna message my green friend. When it's cycling on the green light, you'll click the, green, or you'll click the button and then you'll um, give the button a press to send a buzz to them. So uh, once we're paired, we'll be in, in good. All right, so um, it says device program, so we are good to go. <clears throat> so let's see. Mississippi. All right, so I'm in pairing mode now. Mm -hmm. um, so try putting yours into pairing mode. Mississippi to Mississippi. Okay. Okay. All right, you're cycling? Yep. Sweet. Okay, pick a friendship color for us. Blue. Okay, 
Come on. Well, I'll put mine under here for the wow factor. <gasps> Yay! All right, so we Amazing. are now paired. Yes, okay, so we were blue friends. Yep. Um, <clears throat> it looks like I also have old cerulean friends. and blue. Oh, I've got lots of friends on this one. Okay, so um, do you want to send me a message? Yeah. <laughs> here, I'll trade you. We can be substitute friends. <laughs> All right, and I'll see about uploading this one. Okay, so you've got it selected for message, so if you hold down one Mrs. O. So click it, and it'll start cycling the colors. Okay. Okay, and so you've got a green selected, so hold down like a one Mississippi. One Mississippi. And is that a green one? Or you I might have to send it. One. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. send it on the blue. So click it again, and it'll start cycling. Maybe. <laughs> it, take, it takes the, a bit to get the timing down, but again, um, this is the fun part of the process. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, so do, all right, let go. So that should give you a long buzz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, normally there's a bit more of a, oh! <laughs> all right, so uh, you guys can take a seat for a moment and practice buzzing each other if you'd like. Um, okay, so... That is, uh, we just kind of walk through the default functionality. Obviously, it takes a little bit of practicing to kind of get your timing down. Um, so you can press and you can send different length buzzes when you're messaging your friends. So you can send a short buzz or a long buzz. Um, <clears throat> but this is kind of cool. So you can get the girls excited and kind of like creating their own messages and their own languages, sending their super discreet buzzes from their super cool tech toys that the teachers don't know about in school. Um, because they are Bluetooth, um, they work in range from each other. So if like one of you was to like go in the other conference room because you got really bored of this talk, when you guys met each other in the hallway, your lights would sync up, and so it would let you know which friends are near and buzz. <clears throat> we did test this because I did this talk uh, a couple months ago. My friend like ran down the hallway to test to see how far he'd go before we'd come in and out of range. <clears throat> so basic default functionality. So let's go ahead and look at the API. Um, <clears throat> Again, really cool product because uh, the way they've documented it and the way they've written an API, it's very much in line with what we use as, as full-time programmers. Uh, so going back to doing that <clears throat> idea of um, getting girls in the mindset of reading documentation, reading an API, kind of understanding what's going on and how to start using technology in that regard. Um, <clears throat> So the first thing to know about the jewel bots is um, kind of the way they align. So we've got four different LED lights that we're going to be working with and lighting up. Um, and they've mapped out kind of this compass, and then it's always going to um, go with the micro USB at the bottom. Um, so we're going to have our northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest. And so that's how we're going to target the different LEDs. Um, we've got a couple of different light options. So these are the default colors that are available to us with the ye um, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and white. Um, you do not have all these colors available for the default friendship pairing, only, only four of those. Um, <clears throat> but that's one of the cool limitations that we can go and say, oh, but what, what, if, what if I want to have magenta friends? Um, that's kind of code we can go in and start customizing. <clears throat> okay, so super basic for dealing with our LEDs. Um, we've got all these different methods um, where we can turn on just a single one, we can turn on all of them, we can turn off one. Um, or we've got this kind of cool flash, which is going to do just kind of a blink. <clears throat> so really cool thing about this is it's not very complicated, so it's not super intimidating to a first-time programmer who's going to kind of look at this, and they're going to see this and say, LED dot turn on single. I bet that turns on a single LED. Um, so very readable to English speakers anyway to kind of figure out what's going on. <clears throat> We've got a couple different animations that are set from the default, so we can do a rainbow, we can do the Jewelbots logo, or we can do a breeze single color, which is kind of cool, that it'll kind of fade in and out. Instead of just like a harsh blink, it'll, it'll do more of a little custom animation. Um, so different, different things that girls can play with. Um, that being said, I haven't seen a lot of them do the default animations. They normally want to like go and code and figure out their own stuff. <clears throat> Um, so when we get to our buzzers, we've got um, some really, really complex methods here. We've got um, an extra short buzz, a medium buzz, a really long buzz, and a custom buzz. Yeah. 
Um, so again, not very complicated on the surface, but uh, pretty unintimidating for a new programmer to kind of figure out what's going on. And then with the custom buzz, exploring that idea of, oh, well, okay, I, I can start to set what I want with these different parameters, right? Uh, so there is our buzzer functionality. Um, and then when it comes to using what they call the magic button, which is that button in the middle you're pressing, um, these are the different ways you can initialize. So a button press is just like our basic button press, like when we were choosing a friendship light that was cycling. Um, button press long is our, our two Mississippi. Um, and then I find it really helpful uh, if you want to be testing your code while it's, while it's plugged into your computer. Um, <clears throat> you can do a charging button press, and so that way you can sit there and test it um, while it's plugged in, like you've just got it in the mail and you're really excited, and you rip up the package and, oh no, it's not charged, and so that way you can play with it right away. <clears throat> I'm out of water. I've been holding that for like five minutes and it's empty. Um, <clears throat> so another cool thing we can do is um, if we want uh, our run loop to go ahead and execute while we're charging in our setup, we can go ahead and do set run loop charging. Um, so these are things that I found as I was kind of playing around in coding um, that just helped me get the process set up. Um, and these are the kind of things that you can help lead the girls into um, to make sure that they're not getting frustrated early on so they can test their code right away. Um, if you want to go ahead and allow Arduino code and do kind of like if-else statements, super easy to just set Arduino coding. Uh, when we look through the API, fairly limited, right? You as, as a programmer, you're like, okay, that's not a lot going on. Well, the really cool thing about Joulebots is, is by creating those boundaries, the girls are gonna hit those boundaries and be like, but I want it to do more. I want it to do this. And all of a sudden, we have a future programmer. <sighs> you're bringing me water, you're my hero, thank you. Um, <clears throat> So I love by the, the fact that because it's so limited, it's kind of um, <clears throat> encouraging girls who, as soon as they start exploring, as soon as they start creating, they really have a concept of what they want to make happen. And because they can't do it based on the API, then they start exploring. Then they're like, well, what can the Arduino do? OK, well, how do I take it a step further? How do I do this? But I want it to do this. And all of a sudden, you've got somebody inspired and hungry to create. And that's exactly what we want. <clears throat> Okay, um, so when we are in friendship coding mode, um, these are a couple of our different ones. We can see our red friends, our green friends, our blue friends, or our cyan friends. And so when you've got those functions, that's when your friends come into Bluetooth range, those are continuously gonna run. Um, so that's kind of when you go into the friendship coding mode, how that's gonna work. <clears throat> okay, so if we do a little demo code. Uh, we kind of already uploaded a blank sketch, so you guys saw what that looked like. Um, so the biggest thing that you'll probably run into is when you are doing this, if you don't put it into upload mode, it's going to give you an error. Um, and so that's just kind of a thing to keep in mind. But again, we like making mistakes because that's how we learn. So I'm going to put it into upload mode for two Mississippi. All right, so I've got kind of that magenta light going on. All right, I'm good to upload. And then I've just got a super basic sketch that I created um, that's gonna circle some lights around. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure that I have my port selected. So I've got my serial port, and I want to go into solo coding mode because I'm just going to uh, write code for myself because I'm lonely now that my friends have left me. Uh, and is that gonna? Uh, does anybody know if you can zoom in on the Arduino? Mm. Ah, okay, there we go. Not that there's anything remotely interesting going on in this sketch, I promise you. Like, go, go check out the forums that the six-year-old girls are doing are way more interesting than me. This is just for demo purposes. But, okay, um, so we've got our sketch ready to go. I'm going to upload it. <clears throat> so... Um, speaking of badass little girls writing cooler code than me, while we wait on that sketch to compile, um, <clears throat> this is Ellie. Ellie does YouTube tutorials on how to do cool stuff with Joulebots. And she's a lot cuter than I am, so we'll listen Hello, to her while I Hello, my name is Ellie Gowett, upload. and I'm going to show you everything you need to know to combine your own color for Joulebot. These are all the colors we can use, but what if we want to use a different one? Go to Arduino. She's got a little Jewelbots logo in the background. First, we're going to write void set up All 
All right, I'm gonna pause Ellie real quick because my Joolbot just buzzed and let me know that it's, the sketch is uploaded. And so now you can see that I've got, uh, if I can get my camera to focus, okay. I've got these lights cycling around, so super basic sketch there. <clears throat> okay, um, so that's as simple as the product is, or um, the product is, is just uploading your sketch, getting that going on, um, and kind of starting to play around. Uh, if I can get this camera. Okay, um, so the really cool thing is when you look through this code to figure out like how I'm targeting the different lights, this is where you can get the girls excited and starting to map out and kind of think programmatically. Okay, well, if I want it to go around in a circle, I'm gonna turn it off on here. Oh, but then I have to turn it on, off and then light up the next one. And so really visual, really tangible ways to get girls excited about what's going on and, and understanding the power they have to control that. Um, <clears throat> okay, and we have about 13 minutes left. Um, so if you would like to see more sketches, I, uh, I did this speaker timer that's super fun. Uh, because normally I do like 60 minute talks and so I, I wrote a timer that um, I set the button with a press and then for every 10 minutes, it's going to buzz at me to let me know what's going on, and then it's gonna blink however many increments into that, that time I am, so it'll blink once at 10 minutes, twice at 20 minutes, and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so this is where uh, you can use a little more interesting code with um, <clears throat> you know, more programmatic concepts like doing a for loop uh, and kind of engaging girls and, and using math and, and doing all that kind of thing to explore these different ideas. Um, there's a really popular Jewelbot sketch right now called Catch the Leprechaun um, that was all the rage in the Jewelbots forums a couple months ago where you um, play a game where you have to uh, click on the green leprechaun light fast enough to catch him. <clears throat> so uh, if we go and take a look at um, Jewelbots.com, here is where we're gonna go to um, here's where we're gonna go to kind of see what's going on. So this is gonna give you the basics of how to turn off and on your Joolbot, uh, how to charge, <clears throat> our code setup. So when I was showing you guys those, those sketches, if you don't wanna get them for my slides, everything's available here. And so this is where we're gonna um, introduce some really basic concepts where the girls can kind of read through here, get an understanding, play with the Joolbot, know what's going on. Um, but this way, you don't have to be there holding her hand to figure everything out. You can point her and be like, oh, let's go find this in the documentation. What do we want to do? Okay, we're coding solo. Um, I want to find out how to do a buzz. We can go through and start looking at the buzz documentation and figure out what's going on. <clears throat> uh, so that is uh, the basic overview of kind of their documentation, the way they have everything set up. Um, they do have a couple different troubleshooting issues here. Um, a lot of it is just getting that one Mississippi, two Mississippi countdown right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you go and take a look at the forums, uh, this is Ellie, who is a obviously top contributor on the Jewelbots forums. Uh, but so she's talking about how she figured out how to make a pink light, and so she's posted her code here for other people to try. Um, so it's really cool to see the girls engaging in that kind of way, showing off their projects. Um, they have an ambassador program where you can kind of get more involved, get some updates, and, and help build the Jewelbots community. Uh, so all sorts of different opportunities in here for the girls to engage with, you know, other girls online doing this, get excited. Again, that social component is really, really key to getting girls excited, feeling like this is an acceptable hobby. It's very clearly made and built for them. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, before we wrap up, I wanna go through a couple of uh, Jennifer's rules of mentoring. Um, so these are just some kind of rules I've created. And especially when you're an engineer, you just wanna like be hands on the keyboard. Oh, let me do that, let me do that. Do not do that. So uh, first of all, keep your hands off the keyboard. Uh, and you'll be surprised how quickly kiddos will pick up keyboard commands. So teach them command S, like teach them those different things. Um, and you'll tell them once and then they'll just retain it and it's kind of mind blowing. Um, <clears throat> So feel free to teach them any ways that you would do things, ways to optimize, but keep your hands off the keyboard. <clears throat> um, let her make mistakes. And so this is really key. Uh, so if let's say I forgot to um, put my Jewelbot into upload mode when I was uploading my sketch, it's gonna give an error. Well, instead of correcting her right away and being like, oh, did you put that in upload mode? Let her see the error and let her read the error and think, hmm. What, what did we do wrong in this process? Kind of help her um, start that troubleshooting pathway of figuring out, okay, this didn't quite work right. What are the possible things that could have led to that? 
Um, don't give her the answer, help her find it. I feel like I've harped on this a lot with going to the documentation, kind of starting to build that mindset. I know it's really easy, because like, as programmers, we want to like show off how smart we are and know the answer and be really helpful. But the most helpful thing we can do is, is teach the kiddos how to find their own solutions. Teach her how to read doc documentation. Um, talked about creating diagrams of the ideas, kind of starting to map out, oh, I want to light up this LED, and then this LED, and then I want it to buzz. Um, so perfectly fine to start diagramming on pen and paper. Um, maybe help her be more of a plotter than a pantser. Myself being a super pantser, I'm like, oh, I'll write all the code. OK, why does it work? Let me figure it out. Um, and then be patient. Again, like I feel like us as programmers are like, oh my god, you could do it so much faster this way. Or like, have you ever been trying to help somebody? And then you tell them to Google something, and they go to google.com, and then they go to the box, and then they type in their query, and you're like, <laughs> Anyway, be patient. Teach. Be very patient. <clears throat> OK. Uh, so ongoing learning resources, obviously get involved in the Jewelbox forums. Uh, there have been some really cool STEM subscription boxes. Is everybody familiar with the subscription box concept? Like sometimes if we get like beauty stuff or, or socks for guys. Um, so Tinker Crate and Bits Box are two cool ones. Um, little bits are kind of more programmable components that you can start to put together to get engaged in coding. Um, and then of course I talked about different ways to start clubs, start um, kind of community movements to help, to help teach programming to kids, women, girls, whoever you think wants to learn to code, because we all need more engineers. <clears throat> uh, my slides are available here, so you can pull those from GitHub, whatever you need. Does anyone have any questions? He's going to come around with a mic. Yeah. Uh, is there a, a Scratch plugin for coding? Uh, my daughter, he, yeah. she, does, she doesn't speak English yet. Mm -hmm. So there would be a big barrier to, to start, I guess. Yeah, um, so there is not necessarily a Scratch plugin, um, but this is open source. So um, if you would like to translate Jewelbots into your language, you could definitely submit a PR to them and be like, hey, can we get this translated? So. Uh, I yes. Uh, there's this other open source project called Ardu Blockly, which is Blockly, it's like Scratch, but made by Google on top of Arduino. So I don't know if it works with this one, but it work, it, this is a generic Arduino, right? So I think Ar you could try to see if Ardu Blockly works out, which is not exactly Scratch, but it's a block-based interface that is also translatable to other languages. Other questions? Okay, have a great rest of your day, you lovely humans.